Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Here we are. We're back again. Tony Wyatt, Luke. And Justin, who might bring maybe more intel than any of us combined on this. We were talking offline about the best types of braided fishing line. We're in particular talking about inshore saltwater fishing. So we're talking anywhere from eight on the low end pound, mostly 10, which is what we recommend for most scenarios, 15 and really up to 20. So Justin, why don't you start? Because like we were offline, we're talking about P line versus fuse versus gel spun. And we have all these different things. And I saw this one suffix is talking about eight braided fibers and 32 weaves per inch. What the heck does all this stuff mean? There is so much that goes into the construction of braid. And we'll get into talking about all the different terms and all the different types of braids that are on the market, both brands and what is a, what's a braid, what is called a PE line, what is a fused line like Nanofill or Fireline, we'll get into that too. But at the end of the day, all that braided line in, all the braided line is, is gel spun polyethylene, okay? Dyneema and Spectra are the two brands of line they're, they're like trade names that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, Spectra being Power Pro uh, by, I think, the company we've talked about. It's called Honeywell. And a lot of these different companies, you know, like Daiwa or Power Pro, or there's Fins, there's Suffix. You know, we've got a couple examples in front of us. They all work with similar types of fibers. And then they add unique things to them, like Suffix will add a Gore Tex fiber or. You know, J-Braid uh, by Daiwa uses what they call Isanis, and it's a particular fiber used in the center. Um, and, and that changes the property of the line. But when people think braided line, initially for many, many years, the line that people think of is Power Pro because it's been out the longest. It is a, it's a Spectra product by Honeywell. Um, it's a four-strand carrier. And what that means is there's four fibers that are woven together to give it its shape. And it's done in such a way that, you know, it's round, it's limp, it's thin, it's very, very strong with zero stretch, and it casts a mile. And it's been out there for a long, long time. A lot of people that made the switch from monofilament to braided line went into using PowerPro. That was the go-to. And since that time, and since the explosion of braided line, I'd say in, what, guys, like the mid-90s, late 90s, definitely early 2000s, a lot of people were saying, what's braided line? Like, all I need is 10 pound to fight you know, 50, 100 pound tarpon, that's it. And people started to really put more attention and focus on it. Um, but it is gel spun polyethylene, Dyneema or Spectra, they're virtually the same thing. Um, it's how the line is put together and heated or treated or coated um, that that starts to affect the overall property of the line. I Mine was spider wire was first for me yeah. personally. And that was in the 90s for sure. I remember Chris Bachman, he brought it over one time. We were, we were bass fishing. And he's like, man, have you seen this new stuff? It's braided line. And I was like, what in the world? That's that's garbage. No one's ever going to use that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I Here we are today. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I thought the same thing. I, I was very slow to make the transition to. It took me until fishing with Nick Turner, uh, who I ended up doing tournament fishing with later. And uh, he was just casting further than me and he was catching more fish and it was driving me crazy. So I, I made the I made the plunge to Power Pro, just as you said, Justin. That was my first one. And and uh and i quickly realized how beneficial it is and i literally have not used mono since all right so you mentioned the four now we've got eights right so you know we've been doing some testing here with this j braid eight what is it what is it what are they going up to now how many strands so for most consumers eight strand braid is is the highest braids do go up to 12 off the top of my head, I can't figure out what carriers go up to 12. I think Berkeley has a particular line that goes up that high as well. And all it is, is it's smaller fibers, more of them. And the more fibers you have in theory, the, the rounder the line truly is. An eight strand braid is more round than a four strand braid. But what you'll notice on the difference between, you know, say Power Pro that is a four strand braid to an eight strand braid 
is that it's a lot smoother when you jump up into an eight strand braid. Um, Power Pro does kind of have a coarse feel to it. And overall, it doesn't necessarily affect the abrasion or it doesn't affect the performance of the line per se. I used to think that abrasive lines or coarse lines like Power Pro might chip guides or might damage tackle. But over time, we've got a lot of guys using it for a long, long time and don't have that issue. Um, I had always gone the route of using a smoother eight strand braid. Um, and, uh, you know, Daiwa has the regular J braid eight, and then we carry the J braid eight grand, which incorporates this Isanis material as their core fiber in the center. And it makes it more abrasion resistant. That was the means of, of, uh, implementing that as their main fiber. It's likely hydrophobic, slightly a little, it's probably a little more dense of a fiber material in the center. Um, but overall, the outer seven strands of that braid, uh, when put together, are going to feel a lot smoother than a Power Pro, you know, if you put it in your hand. All right. I'm going to put a note for Jake. He's going to have to look up hydrophobic. Hydrophobic. <laughs> You're always bringing the big words to these podcasts. Oh, I didn't even want to get into HMPE, like ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to touch that one. This goes deep. There's, so, there's a lot of science behind it. But all you need to know, four strand. Power Pro, Power Pro, traditional Power Pro, a little coarse, great for casting distance. And we are fishing the J-Braid 8 Grand as well as a team. A uh, little bit smoother, still very, very limp line, but uh, we'll kind of dive into performance and, and on the water reviews from you guys here as well, as well as some other lines like, like Suffix, you know, we've all used in the past. Yeah, and fins, and we, I know like you got some of that Beyond Bray that keep advertising. I think even some false advertising we might go into a little bit later. Um, uh, it's a whole nother, another issue there. Um, so is just to kind of knock one subject off, uh, before we get into the next one is, is eight doesn't sound like it's always better than four, right? It's, it's really applicable. I've, I've inherently leaned more towards using an eight strand braid, um, because it is my belief. And I think we're going to test this out, Luke, and find out for sure that a smoother eight strand braid diameter for diameter against a power pro or a four strand braid um, casts a little bit better. It's a little bit softer. It's a little bit limper. There's less friction. Um, and over the years I have had guides chip on rods um, by using, I think the original suffix performance braid, I think that was a four strand braid. It was kind of a silver and gold label before they came out with 832. And I've chipped guides and I always wondered, well, is it because my braid's abrasive? I, I mean, back then I, I had no clue. Or because um, you always have that fan running right near your rods, right by, we're looking at it. <laughs> that's what, that's what it is for sure. <laughs> um, but I, I have, I'll oh, start going. I said, I've just, I've used eight strand braids for a long time, whether it's suffix, whether it's J braid eight, um, and, uh, I think Seaguar also makes a tournament smackdown braid that was really, really, really thin and very smooth, but man, it's like way thinner than everything else. And it gets to be a little dangerous. There is such a thing as too thin of braid, especially when fishing on the flats. Um, so that's, that's my take on it. Yeah. And between the eight to four, so I've been doing some testing, some, some casting contests where I, you know, have the same reel, the same rod and, and everything's the, and the same weight, just the casting weight, everything's the exact same, except for the line. I've tested out um, Power Pro has been the one I started with. So that's always kind of been the, the control in these tests. And so I've done, I've done the Power Pro original Power Pro compared to the 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 eight. So this they're super slick, which is eight strand. I don't know about their diameters. I can't remember if the diameters are the same or not. But this the actual Power Pro casted further, which surprised me. So I I was under the impression that the smoother line would cast further, and that's not that's not always the case. Um, so, so far in testing, I haven't seen, uh, consistent that the four is better at X and the eight is better at Y there. A lot of it's, a lot of it's line specific. Um, in some cases like the spider wire Invisibraid, it actually did great on the casting at day one, but it has a, a coating on the, on the, uh, on the outside of it. And after you use it for say like a, you know, a couple of weeks, that coating starts wearing off. And it went from a great caster to a horrible caster. It ended up being my, my least favorite line I've tested so far. And it's because of, and again, I, I thought that was, that was my first eight strand that I tried. And so I was like, oh man, like this, this is a great smoother line. It casts, it casts further. And then I was just like totally disappointed. Um, so some of these lines, you have to think about the long-term aspects of it. 
some of the lines wear down really fast or the, you know, like a wax coating, for example, which is a, a big pro at the beginning, you know, it wears off and now it's uh, now all that, all that fiber, I guess, I, I'm assuming that fiber is kind of loose and it's just catching the air and it significantly decreases casting performance. Yeah. And yeah, go for it, Justin. I remember when, uh, I think it was right around the time that suffix 832 first came out uh, and working, you know, I've worked at, at tackle shops in, in years past and guys would say, how do I know, you know, which braid is a quality braid and how would I know which one's not? And there was a trick people would do. They would take the line and they'd try to put it up and they'd pinch it and push it together to see if the braid strands would separate. And we would look really closely at these five and these fine fibers and see which ones were more uh, packed tight as opposed to which ones would you know, be, you know, have more space in between them if you push them together. Because when you cast in a moment's notice, these lines are kind of compressing together. And the thought was, if you can see more space in between these fibers, then you be, might be more prone to wind knots. Um, more fibers on an eight strain brand may mean that. Um, but over time, I think we'll, you know, we'll be able to tell from just on, you know, on the water testing. Yeah. That's why I take a microscope out on the water every time I go. Super handy to have. So Luke recently, and we're talk about Tony and Wyatt, what, what happened. So Luke did a test. We share it with our insiders. And, you know, kind of Power Pro in general has been our go-to. If you've been following us here at Salt Strong, we're not sponsored by any of these groups, but we've, we've always liked Power Pro. It's, it's just worked. It's, it's, and not just that, it's been winning pretty much most of the knot contests and strength contests. And then finally, Daiwa J Braid beat it, right? Luke, so talk about that. And then Tony and Wyatt kind of share what happened with, with you guys in particular with, uh, with this 10 pound J Braid. Yeah. So I've been testing in these, in these contests, I've been, I've been doing three contests on the lines. Uh, and so one is on, on just the overall knot strength, right? So I'll tie knots, I'll pull them, measure the, you know, measure the breaking strength. Um, and then also casting contests. And, uh, and that's, and that's again, what I mentioned before, where I equalize everything, same rod, same, same reel. Um, the only difference is the line and the same weight. And, uh, and then abrasion resistance and for braid, the, the abrasion is really tough to measure. So that's been a little bit tougher, but for, for the braid, I specifically focus on casting distance and strength, uh, because that was, those are really the two, you know, in, in most cases, your leader is going to be rubbing up against the abrasion stuff. So the abrasion is not quite as important as it is with like fluoro and mono lines. Um, but anyhow, so on the, on the, um, the not contest one, this, this is the J braid eight grand. Um, I've done a ton of tests with a bunch of lines on not, not strength is it's the easiest, right? I can just do it right here at the house. It's in a controlled environment. And generally I'm using 10 pound line just to keep everything, everything the same. And, uh, in general, the breaking strength with the FG knot on a 10 pound braid to a, a 30 pound leader is, is, is the, my test case. Um, it's usually around like 17 to 21 pounds at best. And, um, and, and if, and when I got this, this J braid eight, the first time I did, it was 23 pounds. And I was just like, wow, I was, I was pretty amazed. Next time was 25 pounds. So this is a 10 pound line, 25 pound breaking strength. I was totally blown away. So this is, this is the, the line that has had the strongest breaking strength I've ever seen on, on a, on a 10 pound braid. So that alone, I was extremely impressed. Um, I use it as well. And I did see, I did have a, a decent sized snook. It's probably 27 inches just under the slot, but it had me around two pilings and, and I had to pull it up current around these two pilings and the, and the line was, you know, the braid was all over the pilings with oysters and it survived as well. So I, I was, uh, at least for the strength side, this has been very impressive, but there's a pro and con to everything. And I'll let, uh, Tony Wyatt go on the, the con part of it. Yeah. So I know Luke likes to do a lot of the controlled stuff, you know, the testing and all that, but when it comes to how I like to test out products, you know, take it out on the water, use it real life scenario. And I had a big problem with wind knots on the J braid, the 10 pound, you know, I, I usually use Power Pro originally, you know, always use the four strand Power Pro. Then I recently switched to the V2, the slick, and wasn't having any, any issues with that. Switched to the J Braid, the 10 pound. First trip out, it was like every three or four casts, I was having issues with wind knots. And I know Wyatt was having sort of the same issue as well, right? 
Yeah, I was out filming an insider report. It was actually for those uh, those who've been keeping up with the uh, the insider reports, the ones that we put up each week. Uh, this was the first part of that three redfish series that I've been doing. I, if you notice, I switched rods uh, kind of halfway through that report. It was just like every couple casts, I was getting really bad wind knots with that J braid. I actually ended up taking the reel off the rod because it's a rod that I really like. Throwing the reel in the back of my kayak crate and uh, putting my other reel on that rod just because I, I couldn't continue to use it. It was, you know, I was having to cut line, tie on new leader. It was becoming a hassle and there was fish. I could see them everywhere and it was just costing me time being efficient on the water. You know, I can't have those kind of mistakes happen. Um, and I know that I spooled it right now. I'm used to using the, the original power pro as well. I've used the slick V2, uh, Tony, as you mentioned, but you know, as Luke mentioned as well, that waxy coating, that's on those. I've had it wear down and I just, I'd rather just stick with the original power pro uh, just because I don't have to worry about losing that casting distance. I've not had any wind knot issues with the V2. I have had wind knots with the, uh, the power pro uh, the original power pro not had any issues like that with the, the V2, but I don't like losing out on casting distance. Um, so I have just traditionally stuck with the, the original power pro, but yeah, that, that J braid in that report, I'd, I couldn't continue using it that day just because I was getting so many wind knots. Was it an exceptionally windy day for both you guys? Yes. Okay. Maybe for me, it wasn't. I was actually, I started out the day and it's kind of like a creek where I launched from and it was wind protected and I was casting around having issues. Once I got out into the main area, it was a little windier and still having some issues, but you know, I'm, I'm fishing from a kayak 99% of the time. I always have the wind to my back just so I can get a better cast. So I, I don't think it was the wind in that case. Some people also do say like how you spool it on the reel uh, plays a big part. But honestly, when I put Power Pro on, I tie it onto my reel. I throw the spool on the ground and the spools flying everywhere, hitting the dog, hitting the walls. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I still never have issues with wind nuts on the original Power Pro. Yeah, why? How did is that how you spooled yours up too when you did the? No, I actually, that contraption that you made, if anybody hasn't seen that video, the one with the cardboard box and the pencil, I did that. And I actually had a uh, resistance applied as well. I put a little block in the, uh, in the cardboard box so that it, it applied extra pressure so that I knew that when it got spooled on there, it had good pressure. There was nothing that got let up. It was honestly, I was really excited to use it. It was on a brand new reel, uh, that, that ballistic 2,500 that we carry, I was so excited to get out and, uh, and use it because it was perfectly spooled up on a brand new rod, brand new reel. And it was just, I was having so many problems with it. It was very frustrating. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Jody used it as well, right? The yeah, I've, I've been yeah. using it on two of my reels, this uh, 10 pound and I got one in gray and I found one in this uh, blue color. I don't know that the blue doesn't, Island blue doesn't make a difference, but yeah, I've had zero issues. Um, but I had issues with the suffix. I like, to me that this is like my worst enemy. And, and a lot, I think a lot of it's too, like, you know, we've had people and we obviously were big into Shimano and had some issues there. And like, I I've never had any issues with any of my Daiwas and some have been dunked multiple times now. And, and yet you get someone who buy their first Daiwa and they're like, Oh, this thing sucks. It fell apart. And you know, it, so it's, I don't know, some of it could just be bad luck or something or just a, a bad trip. But I, uh, I use some of that suffix and I had kind of like you guys just like nightmare. I was like, all right, I'm done with this stuff go back to what works. So, uh, and do you use Justin, you kind of are both right. You you're, it sounds like you're less power pro and more Daiwa J braid and suffix or fins or what else? I have not used a, I have not used original power pro guys in like 10 years. I've used, uh, hmm, that's suffix so 1999. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very much a, like, I want to use the newest thing out there. I want to test the newest thing on the shelf. I've just, I've just tested a lot of products over the years. And, and I mean, not for any extended period of time, I think every like year and a half or maybe two years max, I'm changing out my braids on all my flat stackle. Um, and I mean, from power pro to regular suffix, I think like my go-to lines now have either been a J braid eight grand, but admittedly I have not popped them on my inshore setups. I have the, uh, I have a 30 pound on both my, my, my BGM Q 6,000 and, uh, another prototype 6,000 I'm, I'm playing with. And, uh, and I've, I've been fine with the bigger braids, you know, 20 and 30 pound. Uh, but for smaller stuff, I've had suffix eight, three, two on four different setups. And every once in a while I get wind knots, 
but um, but I've been running this stuff for a long time. Suffix 832 has been out for a while, and I've done well on it. I've fished it in tournaments. I've won tournaments. I've you know caught 35 and 40 inch reds around structure on this 10 pound braid, and I personally haven't had the bad experience with it. So I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of like once you once you try a couple different things. Like I've tried Power Pro V2 before. I liked it. It came in a timber brown color, which I thought was unique and. As the lagoon water was a little dirtier, I was like, okay, timber brown, maybe it'll blend more with the water. And uh, I switched from that because I felt that over time, that line actually swelled a little bit. And I felt that the diameter got to be a little bit thicker. I was like, well, I think that's affecting casting distance. So this has kind of been my go-to most of the time, but I'm going to be loading up two of my inshore setups with the j 8 Grand and 10 Pound to try it myself. And, uh, and see if I have similar results to Tony and Wyatt. I just, I want to try it all. I want to try everything. And I think everybody's experience ends up being a little bit different. Yeah. You're the first guy I've ever met that bought doo-doo brown colored line. Like that's crazy. Yeah. All, <laughs> all, all natural. Ah, they At call it number, it number two for a reason. V2 <laughs> in the poo color. <laughs> but does anybody here match their line to their rod and reel setup? That's the question. Uh, I did that once fishing oh, yeah. with Steve Richardson and he gave me uh, so much grief for it. I, I quickly ripped it off. How about you, Tony? Are you asking because you do it or because you wanted to rip on me as well? No, just, just wondering. I mean, I have a, I think have this got set up here. It's got the gray and the silver and all that. So Ooh, it looks sharp. This is a V2. <laughs> but I'm usually a, a moss green kind of guy. How is your... Uh, I'll add on the on the suffix. I, I tested that one out as well. The line was okay. I would say if anybody's using it, especially if anybody's get new and is about to start using it, be very careful uh, with your knots because uh, this performed terribly uh, with knots. But it, it, there was just one trick that made it not so bad is that it has a little wax coating on there, similar to the to that uh, spider wire, but not as bad. Um, but but the, some knots were slipping. I had the issue with the double uni as well as the FG knot when I was doing the knot contest. It's the this is the only line I've ever had the actual knot slip during a during a knot contest. But what fixed it is if you just grab get your fingernail and just rub the line, rub that that wax off the line. That'll help your knots make sure that your knots stay in place. So if you're using any sort of wax coated line for that matter, but 832 and the Invisibrate are the two that I've seen that have the the biggest impact with the wax. Uh, just make sure to rub it off. It won't weaken the line. It actually makes the knot stronger, which, uh, which is again like the only. This is the only. It literally happened three times. It happened twice during the knot contest, and once I lost one of my casting weights because I was, I was trying to launch that weight, and it just flew off. So be careful with that. Hmm. But now you're so. getting glycerin on the more on off your fingers and your fingernails and the line. That sounds like a horrible idea, <laughs> unless of course you have your Dr. Juice hand and lure cleaner. Of course. <laughs> So I think a good topic too is, or uh, actually a misconception that I see a lot of is abrasion resistance. You know, especially somebody such as myself, I came from bass fishing, up, went into inshore fishing and, you know, we tie straight braid with bass fishing to our lures. We're fishing in grass and we have no problems getting those fish out. And it's a matter of, you know, soft structure versus hard structure. You know, braid is really good for cutting through grass. If you're fishing thick, you know, vegetation, because it's so thin, like, you know, when you're tying knots, you cut your finger because it's a soft tissue. So, um, yeah, if you're using braid for, you know, inshore grassy areas, it works really well for abrasion resistance. But if you're fishing harder structure, rocks, you know, pilings with barnacles on it, as soon as it touches that with any amount of pressure, it will break off. That's why that's another reason why we use leader inshore. Yes. Very, very good tip. So. Why? What? What do you like? What do you? Are you back to Power Pro Original? It sounds like. Correct. Yeah. So I, I'm back to Power Pro Original. I've tried a bunch of different braids. Uh, when I first started fishing, I used that Berkley Nanofill. Uh, that was the first braid that I ever used. I enjoyed it for you know just basic casting in the pond. It was okay. Um, I found that it didn't hold up very well in terms of knot strength. And as we're on the topic of abrasion resistance, I actually had it break off in cover in soft cover before as well. It wasn't a terribly strong line. Um, then I went to the spider wire, which, uh, 
you know, that was okay. I had issues with knots. Uh, and then when I found power pro, as I kind of started diving more into saltwater fishing, learning a lot from salt strong, that was kind of what was taught was, you know, spool up 10 pound power pro. You're going to get good casting distance. Uh, I watched all of the knot strength tests and tutorials that Luke had put together years and years ago. And it was just like, there was no other line that I felt like I had, I needed. Um, and uh, it's consistently produced for me. I, I've, I've played with some others. That suffix 832 is good as well. I never had any issues with it. I, I can't, you know, I have wind knots uh, with, with all kinds of different, I mean, I even get wind knots with the original Power Pro, but I don't remember it, the uh, suffix 832 having an excessive issue with it. So I, I'm okay with suffix 832, but I trust the Power Pro a little bit more because I've used it a lot more and it, it just sends a, just tends to work really well um, for me. So I'm not going to switch up until I can get some, uh, I, I was excited to try the the eight grand and I'll have to try it again on a non windy day and, and maybe further test it. Uh, but, you know, I was excited to see that it had better abrasion resistance, which is important. I fish around a lot of oyster bars, which, you know, I have lost fish that have kind of ducked around the bar or maybe I'm fishing a top water over it and they'll skip back around. And it's like, you know, if I, any advantage I can have on a fish, whether it's abrasion resistance, casting distance, um, not having as many wind knots, I'm going to try to maximize the amount of positive effects while minimizing negative effects. So, uh, I'm going to have to play with that, that eight grand more, uh, and see what I can get with that. Cool. Tony, what did you say offline about the dial with J braid that it seems to be the best once you hit 20 pounds or higher is something like that? Yeah. From some people I've talked to, I have some friends that use the, the eight grand as well. And they say, once you get into that, you know, thicker diameter to 20, 30, 40, 50 pound, you don't seem to have that much issues with the wind knots. Like I was using 10 pound and they said, when you get to that really thin line, that very limp line, you're going to have a lot more issues. So, so I'm curious to see if Justin, you have any issues. Cause I know you said you use mainly 20, 30 pound. Yeah, I don't have honestly a lot to speak to for uh, the ten pound size, but for the thirty pound braid, it oh, will hold up. Miami. It'll hold up to Kubera snapper in forty something feet of water with jagged rocks and oysters. Look how so, look how happy you look there. Yeah, super <laughs> happy. So I mean, that was uh, that was J braid eight grand and and thirty pound on a on a six thousand with um with that's actually 60 pound liter and i fg you know the two lines together and from a knot strength standpoint and from you know i don't know if that braid ever made contact with uh with rocks and structure but that would be the fish to test the tackle and uh it, it survived it so i'm i've been happy with it from a heavier line class that's what i've outfitted all of my heavier setups anytime i fish a bridge inshore uh it's 20 pound if i'm gonna go offshore i'm, I'm using 30 i'm pretty sold on it but i'm excited to to be there with you guys and try the 10 personally pop it on my setups um i'm sure it'll perform similar to the suffix that i've used but uh we'll we'll see time will tell yeah i just bought a quantum baitcaster and i'm gonna put the 30 on there there you go so found yeah. it in chartreuse chartreuse we're using chartreuse. 30 when we were fishing for those sharks with captain mark yep those are like five six foot lemon sharks we we're catching on 30 pound jay bird works yeah, really well for that a, yep. this is a super strong line Justin, for those uh, the, those fish that you were catching and you using that heavier J braid, I know you said you liked it a lot. How much kind of translating that fishing to inshore flats fishing, where you're making a lot of casts repeatedly over long distances? What you're doing, or is this you know that similar type of fishing? Or are you deep dropping, you know, trolling where you're not having to do repeated casts into the wind? So that particular fish was caught, you know, cast after cast. I was casting from like 55, 60 feet of water into 30, 35 feet of water where it was shelving out. And I was able to pull that Kubera out away from structure. And 30 feet there is pretty, you know, pretty shallow for Kuberas. They'll head out to 100, 150 feet. But even when I go for tarpon, you know, off the beach, um, and I've, I've had a lot of success here recently with, you know, 60 to 100 pound tarpon, casting, casting, casting two ounce, you know, jig heads and long eel presentations and have done very well. I've had zero wind knots. Um, I don't notice if my distance is any more or less. A lot of times I'm fishing at night or I don't have two different braids on the water to, to check my distance with 30 pound. Um, but overall, I've been happy with it. I don't feel like it's coming up short, so to speak. Yeah, lure, lure weight definitely comes into play. If 
you've got a heavy, you know, two ounce jig on there, your line's really not slowing down <laughs> as yeah. it's coming out of the out of the spool and then through the guides. I like your eel, bro. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> so, Luke, what you've done probably the most like uh, off the water testing with you know this twelve hundred dollar knot tester and stuff that you got. So, in terms of like that ten pound. The J braid has been the strongest. Is that what I'm hearing in terms of? has been the strongest. Yeah. So I I now if I'm just fishing and not testing out a line, I'm just I'm using Power Pro original Power Pro just for my like really my flats, my just long distance casting, and I'm using J braid for power. And so for dock fishing, um, anytime where I, I I'm not so I haven't done, I need to do a casting contest on it, but um, yeah. So the, now this just J braid eight grand is is my go to, I and mean, just given how strong it is proven to be. And I, I haven't used the twenty yet. I've only used the ten. Uh, I've only used it on one on one spool, and I I, I use it. I was using it a lot when uh, I guess toward the end of last year. I do. Rem- I definitely did have. Uh, I do. I know it re- I at least had one wind knot, but I don't recall it being abnormally bad. It was on a windy day. Um, I just kind of wrote it off as I I just shouldn't have been cast into the wind. So I'll, I'll re-spool another one just to see, I, I'll, I'll do two, two rods, one with Power Pro, one with uh, this super, this, uh, this eight grand and just fish them for a while and just see, see what the differences are on castability, on wind knots, just to, I'd really like to have just one line just to say, okay, this, this is the best. Um, also got some Nanofill. And so people asked about testing this out. So that'll be added to the test as well as this beyond braid that has been marketing marketed extremely hard lately. Why, why are you shaking your head? I've used it. It's, you know, I, it falls into that same category as that Guggen braid. It's just, I, I don't enjoy it. I don't think it casts well. I don't think, I mean, I didn't feel like I felt not slipping. I did not like either. I mean, beyond braid, the Guggen braid, there's a couple braids out there. I can absolutely trash. I'm, I was a, I was a gearhead for a really long time with trying all kinds of different stuff. Um, you know, and the Guggen's pretty recent. I wanted to give it a try, but I didn't like that either. And I feel like they fall in the same category, uh, with each other. They don't cast well. I don't like the way that the, the knots came together on them. Um, just not a fan. I haven't seen a good review yet. I haven't played with it and touched it myself, but I'm really looking forward to seeing, uh, what you think about it, Luke. And I know you'll, you'll put it through the ringer and see if it's going to, stand on its own yeah it's it's a 20 pound i don't use 20 quite as often but i I do have some uh some 20 of this power pro max quattro that i've been wanting to test out and so i'll be putting those head to head it's 25 percent thinner yeah mm. it says it right it there is, on the back yeah it's thinner what's that tony no i said it says right there on the packaging um so beyond braid that's that camo one that was getting bashed on social media right because they were saying it was they were alluding to the fact it was made in USA and they got USA stickers all over it. And it's not even, it's made in China. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit. Yeah. It's, I don't really care for that. So it has a flag in there, USA company, but I mean, I, I thought that legally you're supposed to put where it's made on the packaging somewhere. And like, I'm not seeing that anywhere on here. It so should be on the actual like cardboard packaging. It doesn't even, it doesn't, it came like this. It, it didn't have any cardboard. It was literally just this. And I'm, I was just looking at it. I was like, Oh, I wonder where it's made. And it yeah. Seem- legally you do have to say that where it's made. So, but anyway, someone busted them. I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a veteran that saw that and was just pissed off. And, and you should be like, that's, I mean, don't market it as made in USA and put American flags all over it when it's made in China. Uh, just say where it is. Right. I mean, half the stuff, I mean, <laughs> made in Japan, <laughs> it's pretty clear. <laughs> Uh, where's, where's power pro made, uh, power pro is made in, in the U S it is made. Yeah. By innovative yeah. textiles. Yeah. yeah. And With, suff, suffix is made in USA. I think I only have the raw spool. I don't have the packaging. Uh, uh, mine says made, made, made in, in Taiwan. 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 Yeah. Taiwan. Hmm. Now when it comes to lines, I don't know that we don't, we don't have to like go too far down the rabbit hole of like made in the USA, made in Japan products. Um, I mean, owner hooks, owner hooks is not made in the USA and owner hooks is perfection in hooks like things made in Japan uh, from a fishing standpoint. There's a lot of really great quality products made in Japan. Um, I mean, in general, it's wonderful to support USA products, but I wouldn't discredit the quality of a product, you know, based on if it was made in Japan or USA. I oh, think gosh, not at all. I mean, every yeah. every reel that we buy, every reel now sold for the most part for intro fishing is not made in America. It was just, hey, be honest in your marketing. You know, don't that was the more the issue than 
you know, it's just, if you're trying to get someone to use your product, don't, you don't have to be misleading on it right off the, off the bat. And to your point so far, most reviews seem to kind of stink. So I'd be interested to see what you say. So Luke, what was the worst so far in terms of strength? So best is Jaybraid, Die with Jaybraid. I don't remember. It was, um, it might have been the spider wire. I, I, I just, I kind of write off as soon as it's, uh, it doesn't perform. I kind of just write it off. So it was either, it was either the Invisibraid or the suffix. I can't remember, but, uh, either way that neither of them seem to compete with the power pro on the, um, on the overall, but it's all documented too. I can, you can just look on our site and just, uh, search, use that little search bar and search for the suffix or the power pro and all the stats are there and all the, all those tests, just like always the tests are recorded. And so you can see, what the process is. If something's wrong, you can let us know and we'll fix it and make it better. Do you ever test out using eight strands of your hair all braided together? No, I'm still growing it out longer. That's that's the, <laughs> my secret my secret reason. And so that's... Uh, what, what is that now? It's like maybe 40 yards worth right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fill up a spool. Yeah, I got to be able to do a whole spool. <laughs> Luke, Luke braid. 10 pounds. So... Question we get all the time after, hey, what's the best braid? What's the best braid color? Uh, why it's shaking his head? I just don't. I, I think it's such a silly argument because we tie on leaders to completely negate whether your main line has an effect on a fish strike or not. I think that the color of your braid is like the color of your popping cork. It should be whatever you can see easiest. That's my personal opinion on it. What do you guys think? I mean, it depends on where you're fishing, I'm guessing. Um, I mean, like looking at Luke's underwater trout footage that he published here. I mean, it wouldn't no matter what was on there. We had a six inch like monster camera, uh, you know, trolling right there where the, the leader meets the line, the main line. I, I don't know that it matters to your point. Um, but then again, there's some people that swear by it. Luke, have you ever started your test, your underwater uh, that won't be on the braid. That's all about the mono and floor. Oh, you're going to do all mono and floor. Okay. Yeah. I don't think the braid color matters. Like why I said, like the, the Fisher cute ink. So for the longest time I, I was a camo, right? I started the power pro. I started with the, the original power pro dark uh, green moss green is the term. And so I was diehard moss green. And then one time they were out and, uh, and I got the yellow. That was right when we started salt strong. And High so viz yellow. Up. And, uh, yeah. And Joe, remember we took uh, Chris Olt out, we went fishing over in uh, Bay Pines and um, Chris had won one of our online tournaments that we did at the very beginning. And I was my first time using the high vis yellow. And I was like nervous. I was like, oh man, like I don't like having the like, testing stuff while I've taken a client, you know, taking this guy we we're trying to impress. Like we just started salt strong. Like, this is gonna be so embarrassing if we don't catch anything. And uh, and this A strand was like, did uh, the, the high vis did extremely good. Like I, I've, I felt super comfortable and I really like the fact, as Wyatt said, that I could actually see my line. That was a huge benefit. And so really from that day forward, I, I really started switching everything over to yellow, the high viz, just for the, the fact that I could see it better and that I didn't see any difference at all in fish strikes. Um, and so for a while I was using green, yellow, green, yellow, right? I have a couple rods of each and still never saw a noticeable difference. So I just migrated over to yellow. Now I'm having to go back to green because yellow is hard to get, like it's, it's been out everywhere. And, uh, and again, now that I'm going back to green from yellow, I can't tell a difference at all. So I, I don't, long story short, I don't think it matters as long as you're using a leader. If you're going straight to the lure, then maybe so. But um, if you're using a leader, it doesn't seem to matter. Tony, Justin? I've really always stuck with just moss green. You know, again, coming from bass fishing, that's all we use because we're fishing in grass and it blends in really well with the grass. And you're not really using leader when you're bass fishing. You're just tying straight 50 pound rope <laughs> to your lure. So I've, I've always stuck with Moss Green and I'm one of those people that's just a firm believer. And if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't like to switch to new things just to try them out. You know, I like to use what works. And it kind of reminds me of mossy oak camo that I wear when I'm pulling out my four pound niche pickles on my 50 pound braid. <laughs> <laughs> But the only reason I did use a gray, it's like a, I guess it was I'm trying to think of what the color was called, but right now it's a grayish color just because the colors faded a little bit. And that was the V2 just because I couldn't, like Luke's point, I couldn't find uh, the moss green in that color or that type of braid. So I just went with that color and I don't really see any difference. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I would agree. Bra- uh, color is irrelevant, really. I or just fades anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I've, I've gone with white and gray for so long just because it's striking. Like I, I'm a, I'm very cosmetic in my stuff. There's so many reels and rods and custom stuff I've had done. And I'm like, you know, it's if the striking. color really, if you, it's striking, it's just pretty guys. <laughs> and yeah, I like gray. It's unique. You know, there's only like one or two companies that make that color. So I, I stick with it. But in terms of performance, nah, it's negligible. But one thing that's interesting, Tony, I, I remember I went fishing with a guy down in uh, Okeechobee. Uh, we were flipping and pitching and he had moss green braid and he would take a black Sharpie and he would Sharpie like the last 36 inches or so of his braid black. He's like, no, no, no. I get way more strikes when I like Sharpie up my line. And I never really thought about that. I've never seen anybody do it. Um, but it did make me wonder in that application, if having like a blacked out or really dark line did make a difference when flipping and pitching in heavy structures for bass, most guys use dark moss green or just dark green, but he's like, no, this is like a whole nother level. It makes a big difference. Could just be superstition, but that was the only time I was like, oh, you have to like actually make it a certain color to be better. Right. Otherwise for insure, I don't think it matters. (laughs) Yeah. I've heard that too. With the the guys that I saw do it, they would color in and like, two inches like every two inches they were color in so it's almost like a camo pattern they would do that then you got the negative uh sense on there yeah it seems like a bad idea yeah i, I wouldn't it, want it works, it works. Permanent marker. I, I have to imagine it's in between the ears only for uh, in between the human ears only yeah i don't think the fish care yeah once again you're talking about two pound bass that are that aren't they're clearly ignoring 50 pound braided line uh it's still so funny and we grew up bass fish and i get it that's why we're poking fun at it i i i got some i got some 50 pound on a on a on one of my reels back there and it gets used for for freshwater fishing i just can't get through the concept of targeting a bass with 50 pound line or more i just uh i just can't when you're fishing like you know lake toho lake Kissimmee, heavy structure they don't really see the line i mean they see a lure moving and if you're fishing a clear lake like um up north you know you have a lot of clear lakes a lot of those guys mainly use mono just because it's cleaner and when we do bass fish here if we get into a clean lake like like conway or the butler chain or something like that a lot of guys like to go with mono instead so those fish can see it i do believe that no but if you go thick enough they just think it's like another lily pad stem like oh yeah it's just a 50 pound lily pad stem Listen, I've lost like flipping and pitching up in Orange Lake in Gainesville. I was on the bass team using a 30 pound braid on, on my like, you know, saltwater low, like round, uh, bait casters. I had 30 pound braid on it. I was like, I can flip and pitch with this. And I lost multiple fish that must've been eight or nine pounds. I go to set the hook on them flipping and heavy structure. And I don't feel any resistance. I just pull back barren braid. And the guy on the boat's like, dude, you need like 50 or 65 pound braid. You need to quit playing around. And he pulled out like two, nine or 10 pound fish in front of me. So Crazy. it's like, you never think about it. Cause as, as an inshore guy, even in, in structure, we're like 30 pound braid gets it done for most heavy structure situations. But it, when you're freshwater fishing, people are like, why do you need 65? I'll tell you firsthand, if I'm going to flip and pitch, I'm going to use like 80 or, you know, something ridiculous. Cause I don't want to lose a nine pounder for like what? the two times I freshwater fish. What I want to know is how did you have time to be a cheerleader, play in the band, and be on the fishing team? You know, like I said, man, they don't throw the word prodigy around often, but every now and again, you can do it all. (laughs) Yes. Well played. Well played. Well played. Two points for Justin. (laughs) Uh, Sorry, let's, let's all pick. So let's stick with just 10 because that's what we're usually going with for inshore saltwater fishing. Tony, what do you got? If you, if you're going to stick with one, your confidence and you got to pick the brand and the color. Original four strand power pro moss green. That would be my go-to. Okay. I was expecting V2. That was a surprise. Yep. Why? Yeah. Still trying it out. (laughs) <laughs> original v2 four strand high vis you know there's i just don't think it like tony said if it ain't broke don't fix it I've tried a lot and i mean it just it hasn't been beaten in my opinion mm. justin i'm 
I have had suffix A32 in white on four different setups for the past year and a half and have not needed to change it. I've been happy with it, but I'm going to be fishing with this J Braid A Grand in 10 pound gray light. And I will get back to everybody and let you know what I think about it. But I'm a suffix guy right now until I start some of the lighter stuff on J Braid. Cool. Lukey? Yeah, I mean, I just like Justin. I, right now, I have to I have to stick with my my most trusted that I've been using, and that's the, that Power Pro Ten uh, and the High Vis Yellow, just because I can see it better. Um, but uh, if I'm going to put on another spool of this of this J Eight Grand and see um, at least see if if there's a noticeable difference. But yeah, right now I got to go. Long story short, I got to go. Got to go Power Pro Original. Yep, yeah, and I, I'm going to say I'm a I'm torn between Power Pro and this J Braid. I used it to outfish Luke here recently. And that Is that what you were using last time? Uh, yeah. Well, I had, you yeah, actually, you know, one, one reel had, and I caught a fish on a uh, trout on both. So you were on one, fire when you got that trout, that, that big trout and that snook. Mm -hmm. Keep, keep talking about that, huh? Yeah. About time, about time you showed me up. <laughs> what, How uh, many Luke? casts are you making? Are you just waiting until Luke starts catching fish and then casting or? He was doing that. I'd of miss course. a fish and he would, I'd see him get there as fast as he possibly could. But it's a, it's a legitimate strategy, yeah. Tony. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's a smart thing. strategy. Yeah. I don't have to waste any energy. I'm just kind of watching him like, all right, you missed one there right behind him. What, what line were you using though? Because you caught two big fish right in my face. Yeah, I was using the, uh, on one, it was that Island Blue, uh, eight, eight grand. And the other one was just normal. I think it was a normal power pro. I don't even know what it is. It's just old line. So it's been on there for a year. The line doesn't, the line's not what catches fish. It's, you know, it's, it's flame shitty 2.0 is really what get, takes credit for it. So yeah, you were on fire that trip. Last time I checked the fish aren't biting the line. <laughs> They're biting the lure. And it, it even outfished live bait. People are, I mean, that was crazy. Luke, like we, we caught this live bait. We're doing a video for blackout chum because that stuff works. And, and maybe it's just the confidence and maybe we just get bored. But remember that was, that was crazy. I mean, Luke, yeah, we're, literally we're doing a tutorial of fishing live bait on a popping cork. And I'm just throwing a slam shady around them, just like killing time. And I'm actually catching fish. And he's like, what is happening here? And going up to the live bait spot, we both caught multiple fish. So we got multiple like trout, most of which were over 20 inches. And then we get to the, the spot that's had the most fish. And I was doing the live bait tutorial thinking that we're going to crush them. And uh, yeah, Joe caught a couple when I was trying to do live bait, Joe caught a couple more. And then we finally caught a trout with live bait and it was the smallest trout of the day. And then as we were going out, uh, we were throwing lures and, uh, and then Joe caught that nice snook and then a, and a 24 inch trout. Um, so I was just like, man. This live bait stuff isn't as easy as I thought it used to be. It was tough. Well, at least you can sport your braid, as our, our friend uh, Captain Jeff Maggio would say, Lunker Dog. Lunker Dog. Guys out there sporting their braid. Matching, matching the rod, matching the reel, matching their cork. Sport <laughs> the braid. Cool. Well, this has been fun. Um, the good news is we'll continue to keep testing this not just on the water because that is important to, you know to tony's point and Wyatt's point uh not just see hey what's got the best knot strength because if it uh if it's getting wind knots every other cast it's pretty annoying uh but then again i think we should all probably try multiple sizes on different reels and sometimes it's even how you spool it um i mean i and, and even just how much line that that could be a whole nother podcast about just the right way to spool it and I, you see some people you fish with and they have like an inch and a half, you know, gap in there. And some people fill it all the way out to the very end. Uh, and that can definitely make a difference as, uh, as well. So, um, that'll be another fun podcast for us, but other than that, come, uh, come join us in the insider club. You know, we have everything there in the store, fishstrong.com up to 20% off or more, including all of our lines and leaders and lures rods, reels, what else do we have in there? All kinds of new accessories. Can't, unless you're a member, an insider member, you can't get this red hat. We're giving away for free here in the month of April. All you have to do is uh, be active in the community and spend 20 bucks. You get a free $20 hat. One more reason we're trying to come up with some cool stuff this year just to reward our insider members. Just one more reason to be a member and get, get free gear. And of course, we're still doing the Monday giveaways. 
And uh, we're going to we're going to start up in the game here with some pretty cool giveaway stuff for our members. So I think we just hit what is it? Twenty one thousand, twenty something thousand members. That's the count. Woo. So awesome. So awesome. We're having fun. Got some um, got some new help coming in terms of some content creators. We're going to have a little bit more beach fishing, maybe even a little pier fishing. We've got some new mastery courses we're working on for our members. Uh, what uh, we talked about this morning, a potential top water mastery, sheep said mastery, Spanish mackerel, mackerel mastery, rod, rod mastery. That was Justin's, our, uh, our boy wonder over here. That's going to be kind of cool. That yeah. was an interesting uh, in, inner circle. I, I, I went and rewatched a big chunk of that. That's it's really good. It's amazing how confusing it is because none of these manufacturers use the same rules and guidelines. Yeah. It was a tip of the iceberg conversation on that inner circle call. Um, a lot, a lot to go into just like braided line yep. reels and rods. I think are those three that a lot of people want to, they want to know more about. They want to know yep. the nitty gritty and the bones. Yep. Yep. Let's talk about. And then finally, we're going to have another podcast and a whole blog post. A lot of people have asked, just what do you guys recommend right now overall, right? Because we have five people here who all, for the most part, disagreed. A lot of hanging chads. Um, but we can also agree like, hey, if it was just, I could only buy one thing, one rod, one reel, one top water, you know, one soft plastic, what would I use? And so we're going to put together essentially a checklist of, hey, here's the 15 items, maybe 20 that you have to have to be successful. It just a bare minimum because that question comes up all the time, and we're we're coming together just to agree upon. All right, for the best, this is for the best value. Uh, we're not, you know, saying hey, if you know if, if this is completely cheap or hey, if you want to go completely premium, different ball game. But for just overall best value to go out there and catch inshore slams all year long, anywhere from Texas to Florida to Virginia or anywhere between here's what you need. And that'll be a fun one. We, we've been having some fun kind of build down to the back end. So it's going to be super, super helpful. Cool. You guys got anything else? Yeah. Well, More line test coming soon. Woo. Yep. Stay tuned there at saltron.com. Join us in the insider club. We are, uh, we are there for you. That's where we're spending all of our time in the community. Now we've got Austin. We got Richard in there. Now we have all the full-time coaches this they're willing to help so all about the discounts the premium content and of course just an amazing community i know uh victor uh i, I believe is going to be putting on an event coming up soon for insiders a big cookout he's big into pig roasting and so uh i'm pumped i'm pumped to finally get out and start doing some of these meetups again so if you're an insider member make sure to get in the community there's an event tab we'll start posting more of these uh, upcoming events here this summer now that uh, a lot of people are getting their vaccines and, and, or just over it and, uh, and, or have had it and just ready to go out there and socialize again. So, and why your eyes looking a whole lot better, man. It's like a hundred percent healed. Yeah. Yeah. No more, uh, no more big, ugly shiner. So I was happy to hop on the podcast and not look bad for you guys. <laughs> Love it. All right, guys. Good stuff. We appreciate you. All you audience members. We appreciate you big time. You insider club members. We appreciate you big time. You are a family. You're the foundation of this company. And if there's anything we can do to better serve you, let us know. We're always an email, a phone call away. And of course, in the insider community, that's where I'm going next here to spend a little time to catch up. We're, uh, we're always in there. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace. See ya. Because it's in my soul.